Well, my guest uh, today is doing the impossible. He is straddling the past and the future and doing it successfully with two brand new releases. First off, we got John Karabi, Live 94, One Night in Nashville. How about it? Yes. Now, people should know, again, for somebody who just fell off a truck, uh, John Karabi did one album with Motley Crue, the critically acclaimed self-titled Motley Crue album. This is the live presentation of that album. Yes. Did you do this for the fans or for you? Um, well, I, may, may, maybe a little bit of both. Okay. Um, to be honest with you, I was on tour with my solo band, and it, it was so random. Uh, we did a gig, and somebody in the audience yelled up. Uh, they go, happy anniversary. And I'm just sitting there in my brain going, the oh, fuck? Like, okay, it's, <laughs> looking at my watch, I go, man, it's, you know. So I go on the mic, what are you talking about? And this girl yelled up, um, it's today. 20 years ago, your Motley record came out. I had no idea. Really? So um, I, d I didn't realize it. And then um, shortly after, Motley was actually rehearsing and getting ready to go out for their final the tour. Last tour, yeah. Yeah, the last tour. And um, so my manager came to me and he said, listen, man, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know how you feel about this, but... I think for the fans, uh, because Motley didn't really tour extensively in the States, it was obviously, it's common knowledge, it, the record and tour didn't do that well. Mm -hmm. So he said, I think it would be cool if you talk to you guys in your band and go out and do that record in its entirety live. I was kind of not, I was a bit apprehensive about it, but I talked to the guys in my band um, and they were like, yes. Let's do it. So we went out, we did a bunch of shows, and then it, so that was 2014. It kind of carried on into 15. And um, I was like, all right, let's knock this on the head. Um, it, was, it was funny, we would do the shows advertised as the Live 94 album in its entirety, and I would walk off stage and some of these fans would come at the like meet and greet afterwards and they would go, I'm a little bummed out, man. You didn't do any scream reunion. And I'm like, oh, okay, I, I can't win. <laughs> right, so, right. I'm going to knock this on the head. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, you know, I felt bad. I actually did want to take it to places like Japan, um, Europe, and I just never, I never got the chance. So I just said, you know what? Let's just do one recording, one show, knock it out. Um, and at least it's there for prosperity. Yeah. If anybody didn't get to see it, they can at least hear it, close their eyes, and be there for a minute. Yeah. And you and your band had been playing it, so you're in peak performance. Yeah, pretty point. much. I yeah, mean, we so. still had to rehearse a little okay. bit beforehand, but um, I didn't want to do any like you know most bands go out to do a live album and or live recording. They'll they'll record 10, 15, 20 shows. Mm. And I just went went in and I told, actually my son who's here with me is the drummer. Right. Um, Ian? Is yep. Yeah. I talked to all the guys and I said, um, you know what, let's just really rehearse the shit out of this thing and we got one shot at it. You know, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So I found this uh, company to come down and we recorded everything. Everything was totally separated. And then we gave it to Michael Wagner and he did his thing. And then I, you know, I don't know if you're a fan or not, but I wanted to make this um, reminiscent of the Aerosmith live boot. Oh, album. yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So it was just very, very you know, much. Yeah. So it's a little raw. And there's, but it's a great it's, souvenir. And, and your pipes are still there. That's the good thing. It, it would be another thing if you had to revisit this material and you couldn't hack it. But you still got it. Believe me, I was sitting there at rehearsals when we were first starting this thing up. And I was kicking myself in the ass because I was like, what the fuck was I thinking when I sang this shit the first time? Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> How am I going to do Smoke yeah. the Sky? You know, but, yeah. you know, I kind of changed the melody a little bit, okay. made it a little bluesier. 
And um, but we got through it, and everybody thought it was awesome. You know, the one part of all the guys really did a great job learning the parts. Um, but maybe it's because I'm his dad. I'm extremely proud of Ian on the drum. Okay, and he crushed Tommy because everybody was like, T "That was Tommy's great drum album." Yeah, and Ian just killed it. That's he so knocked cool. it out of the park. So, and, and it seems to me, I'm of all the Motley guys, you seem to be the guy who's made the most peace with your past. Yeah, you know, and 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 it's fine. Like I, I, I kind of look at things from a very common sense point of view and um i've always been kind of uh an under the radar guy even when i was in the band motley you know i would i was more content hanging out with the crew guys and the sound guys and you know than than you know all the other crazy insanity shit that used to go on with that thing but right um but leaving the band actually taught me a very good lesson you know and it's like you know, everything in the music industry is incredibly fleeting. So I don't really take myself all that serious, mm -hmm. uh, try to have fun. And, you know, at the end of the day, like, um, you know, success is measured by the person that's measuring it. You know what I mean? You and, and, you know, I may not have Steven Tyler's bank account or Nikki Six's for that matter, but, you know, I'm still here 30 some years later playing music, traveling the world with this and with the Dead Daisies. And I'm just, you know, I'm taking care of myself and my family and life is good. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah, Okay, so I won't belabor this uh, album much more, but... Um, I'll be labor away. Okay. No, are, we go, are we, now that you've uh, put it on a show, are we still going to hear these songs from time to time in your set? Some of uh, Hooligans Holiday or something pop back? Yeah, well, I mean... Boys and Apples? That's the thing, like, I, when I was doing the set, and people were asking me about the Scream and the Union, and you know. So, I mean, when I do play... Uh, with my solo band, I'll I'll play a little scream stuff, some okay. Union stuff, some Motley stuff, um, even some Dead Daisy stuff, okay. um, and then a couple covers or whatever strikes us for you know that show. So it's a little bit of everything. Good. It's you know I, I I definitely touch on everything. Yeah. You know. Well, let's touch on the Dead Daisies new album coming out in the states April sixth. Yep. Burn it down. Yep. Uh, new single uh, Rise Up. Yes. Man, man, oh man. Sounds like a, a good old rock and roll protest song. It's a bit, yeah. Uh, but without being, um, um, I, I'm not really, I, I don't, like, I, I love giving you my opinion, but I don't like, I don't like taking sides. Yeah, it's uh, nonspecific. It's nonspecific. Um, and... Uh, you know, because nothing irritates me more than going to see an artist and paying all this money and then have them rant about, you know, very specific political, you know, opinions. But I, I think that the thing with Rise Up, um, something that really does bug me, is that America has become very divided. Um, you're either... Uh, you know, and, and I'm using Facebook and Instagram and Twitter terms. You're either a idiot conservative or a fucking asshole liberal snowflake right. or libtard, as right. I see a lot of people. You know, and it irritates me when I, I look at things and I just sit there and I go, all these people that are, all, all these people are bickering with each other over an opinion or a, a, a viewpoint. And um, I'm not taking sides with either side, but the one thing that I'm trying to express to everybody is that um, you, you're never going to resolve any disagreement or any argument if you start the argument with an insult. Right, right, right. Why, do, like, why are you doing that? Mm -hmm. The other thing is, I think people tend to forget, you know, uh, whether you you are conservative or liberal, all of those people that are in to me in Washington, all of them, not just the president, all of them have corporations and lobbyists and all the shit in their back pocket. They're making tons of money. You're not. Mm -hmm. I'm not. 
Mm -hmm. We're giving them more money with our taxes. We're not getting anything back for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just sitting there trying to say, when I say rise up, I'm just like, you know what? Why don't we stop arguing with each other and start holding everybody on both sides of the political spectrum, hold them accountable. Mm -hmm. And I More think- More like wise up. Yeah, well, wise up, <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah. But, you know, to me, it's, it's um, you know, it, it's just funny. I think if you asked any conservative or asked any liberal what they want out of life, I think everybody wants to just be comfortable. They want to be able to take care of their family, not get choked on taxes, not get choked on anything to do with your health. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, you know, just put a little money away for retirement and occasionally take the wife and kids on a vacation. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's just crazy to me. Like, I think ultimately we all want the same thing, just to be happy. Mm -hmm. And I just really breaks my heart when I, I go on and I just see these things. And I'll, I'll just open, like, somebody will make some political statement, and I just go to the comments like, oh, I got to see what this, right. what <laughs> this, what shit storm came what out of this. What shit storm came out of this. <laughs> and it's just amazing right. to me, like, um, immediately people start commenting in a really derogatory manner. And I'm just like, fuck, man, like, like you're never going to get anything done. But you know what brings people together is music. Yes. Rock and roll. It's and, still. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things I talk about in my acoustic set. Like, I know, and I say, I know that there's a lot of people here tonight that are on opposite ends of the spectrum politically and on just viewpoints. The thing that's amazing about music is that we can all come together. We can all come together for an hour, two hours, and get along. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just amazing to me. Well, you know. let's backtrack a little for people who might not be aware of who the Dead Daisies are. Great rock and roll band. This is a fourth album? With me, yeah. With you, yeah. And uh, Doug Aldrich, uh, Marco Mendoza. Mendoza. Who else is in the band? Well, days? Brian Tishy just recently left. He's doing some solo recordings, and uh, he's actually out doing some shows this year with Farner. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we just recently added Dean Castronovo okay. from Journey, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and then David Lowy, the founding member of the Dead Daisies. So Beautiful. It's uh, it's pretty awesome, and it's a great sounding. And album, they got some right? hack singer dude. So, I don't know oh, what his fucking and, deal is. And man, again, you know, not blowing <laughs> smoke, but your pipes are really uh, nice bluesy stuff. And in a very ballsy move, you guys did a cover of the Rolling Stones classic "Bitch" on here. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, I'm looking at it, it's not going to work. And then I listen to it; it really works, even without horns. Well, that you know, song it, 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 you know what's funny? Like we historically have done a song or two. A cover song on every record. I, I think they did it even before with old singer John Stevens before I joined the band. But since I've been in the band, we've done like a cover or two. And it's just, honestly, it's just us. It's not because we don't have enough material. Mm -hmm. we, we've actually had extra material from every, re every record we've done. Um, it's just kind of a tip of the hat to all of our heroes. We're still huge music fans um so we kind of wanted to do a stones tune and we were listening to a bunch of stuff and it, you know it's weird you got to kind of have a thread through the whole record you know if you've listened to the record there's mm -hmm. there's i don't want to say heavy but it's a bit more aggressive or heavier than anything we've done so you know i mean i would have loved to done Tumble and Dice, or It's Only Rock and Roll, uh, you know, Angie, you know, Waiting on a Friend. There's a million songs we could have done. The reason why we did Bitch, though, is because the riff that's in there, um, once we started playing it, we're like, oh, this is just driving, yeah. and, it, and it, it suits the rest of the record. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, we had fun with it. It was oh, cool. It's, it's very cool. Very cool. So um, let's let's. Yeah, you got a European tour coming up with Dead Daisies. We have a massive tour this year. Mm -hmm. We are doing a. We're we're starting in the UK and Europe. Then we come home for like catch our breath, mm -hmm. and then we're off to Japan, South America. We're doing eight weeks in America and Canada. Um, then we're going back to Europe again, Israel. 
Um, and then I, I don't want to say anything, but our management's got some insane Guinness Book of World Records thing that we're going to try and do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right okay well we may see you again who knows i don't know it might be my funeral yeah, it might <laughs> be it might be but he'll go out with his boots on rocking yes well uh and what what else do people need to know about john karabi again uh 194 live one night in nashville nice piece of work uh the dead daisies burn it down out april 6th yes what else do we need to know um, any tour dates, you can go to www.thedeaddaisies.com. Everything's on there. Um, and, and then also, w, what, why do we have to say the W? You don't. You don't. <laughs> Total waste of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Karabi Music dot com. You and, go. you know, there's tour dates and all the, all the stuff that you need to know is there. Um, it might not be on there. It may be on there. It might not be on there. But I'm starting a foundation. Um, for it's called the John Karabi needs an Audi R8 Spider, so you can <laughs> donate to that. Um, all I need is like a hundred and fifty thousand of you guys to send in a dollar, and I can fucking I'll do this. How do we know that our money is really going to buy you an expensive? I will send everybody car. a picture of me in the sports car. <laughs> <we go>. Boom. <laughs>